for you will try to make my mistake yet again. Not yet again. Um, good morning, colleagues um, from the civil society, the Inspector General of Police, Mr. CEO Sambujang Njai, Madam Commissioner, and Madam Salome from the UNDP, and all protocol respectfully and duly observed. Indeed, the GPU is proud to as associate itself as we go ahead or as we look forward to the local government elections. This initiative is very important in ensuring there is transparency, accountability, probity, as well as free and fair election. The election, this election is, I can say, is one of the most important elections in the country because it is closer to the people at the local level. And I'm sure it will be highly, highly contested. Such forum, obviously, will avail stakeholders to understand the election proceedings, the rules, as well as what IEC is doing in ensuring that they also participate meaningfully towards the success of the elections. As we know, election can be a major means of conflict resolution, but as well, it can be a potential conflict driver if it is not managed properly. If the stakeholders are not given the platform to also exercise their rights, as well also given the rights to hold the electoral body accountable, and if the electoral body is not also inclusive, obviously, there is a potential, or there can be a potential uh, conflict. To the CSOs, CSOs and the media, this is an opportunity for you to engage the IEC. Clear your doubts, engage them thoroughly, as well as understand the rules of proceedings during elections. The media and CSOs, especially the observers, should cover elections in a free, fair, and impartial manner. The media should focus in very important issues, on issues rather than sensationalizing issues, because these elections is very important and critical. Also, CSOs and media should adhere to the election guidelines, which is stipulated in the Electoral Code of Conduct, as well as laws that are guiding the election or the electoral process. As journalists, we should also be impartial. We should conduct ourselves in a way that we will not be partial or partisan, obviously. And I see the Independent Electoral Commission. This is the final electoral cycle, or the final activity of, the, of your electoral cycle, which is key. It is important to accord civil society and journalists opportunity to effectively and efficiently cover the elections, observe the elections without undue interference and harassment, especially from our brothers, from the security forces. Um, we've seen during the presidential elections, there were no harassment, we can say. Um, equally, the parliamentary elections, probably a few hickeys, and now we are going to the local government elections. We are hoping that this will continue 
Mr. Commissioner. And finally, the IEC should give timely information to both observers and key stakeholders, like journalists, before, during, and after the elections, whether upon request or proactive disclosure by using various channels. On that note, I thank you all for your kind attention. Mr. President, uh, for those words of encouragement, and of course, I hope from the IEC, we continue uh, to have an open door policy, making sure that we provide timely and also relevant information. And of course, uh, I think another key issue we mentioned was the issue of the need for the media to be apolitical. It, of course, we expect the media to be highly professional and of course to be issuing balanced reporting on the process and of course also being neutral in the execution of their duties. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, for, for that wonderful statement. Uh, so next, uh, we would like to have uh, the CSO, the civil society organization, that's Tango, uh, to give us a goodwill message. So I would like to invite uh, Mr. Cham, Osman Cham, to give us a statement. On behalf of the Executive Director of Tango and the Chairperson of Tango Board of Directors, I say good morning to all of you. First of all, I want to raise my appreciation for the, the presence of CSOs, my colleagues in this gathering. For CSOs to have their demands incorporated into public programs, qualities such as political neutrality, evidence-based data gathering, and consistency in judgment are critical. We have to be neutralized, CSOs. We are not particip participants because in our demand constitution we say non participant participant, so we have to be neutral in all what we do, CSOs. Applying methods such as lobbying and strategic use of media can be very effective in engaging political actors. CSOs must ensure there is an adequate regulatory framework for elections and civil participation building upon the necessary capacities of public authorities and civil society to ensure face, fair and free and fair elections and effective and, in, and transparent engagement of citizens in the political decision-making processes. It is important that CSOs and NGOs and the media to develop strategic approach, approaches to, to raise awareness and source of electoral processes and to build and to build the uh, time to build first time voters on as well as awareness to raising raising on the importance of participating in effective both as voters and candidates. That is the youth, the young people, among young people, so that they, they become voters as well as, as first time voters and as well as candidates. CSOs and youth can also assist electoral administration in developing voter education and information campaign with special focus on women, minority, monitoring of media coverage, national minority, that is PWDS and other underrepresented groups of voters. We know CSOs are always engaged in voter education across the country in all electors and throughout the electoral cycle. This is one of, one of the things that CSOs normally do. We do voter education very well. Okay. We all should be aware that the heart of participatory democracy is that citizens' interests and need, needs should be the focus. The focus of every every political decision making process at all government governance levels. Participatory processes allow for exactly 
that gives citizens the possibility to take part in the decision making and to provide the impulse for change. So we know the CSOs and media work hand in glove because the CSOs use the media very well because we are partners in development. So I want to say something about the media and elections at this moment. At the, at the most funda fundamental level, the media and, uh, and our channels of communication serving to relay, relay messages to various audiences. But simply, freedom is written, freedom is when the people can speak. When you talk of freedom, when the people can speak freely, you don't look behind. As we used to be here, when you want to say anything, you have to look for glance everywhere. But now, if you say freedom, it means people have to speak. And democracy is when the government listen. When we say democracy, the government has to listen to the people very well. That's what we, what we call democracy. And democracy is for responsible people. And then the media is the messenger. So the media is the messenger for democracy. We really have to relate, they have to tell the people what is happening and make raise awareness. Both traditional and now media play a critical role in, in elections. First, the media serve as watchdogs. They criticize the electoral process and analyze how well institutions and electoral actors have performed and, and highlighted in successes and failures to help the public hold them to account. Second, the media act as platform for campaigns, campaigns, candidates and parties use the media to disseminate their plans, their promises and vision for the for the future. Third, the media is pro provided a forum for election related public debate public debate and discussion they allow ordinary citizens to, to, to be heard thereby helping their them influence political agendas and other voters fourth the media is a public educator. They educate the people to act to provide voter education, information, journalists or offer, or offer useful analysis of the news, presentation, present various interpretations of events and, and statements. Such analysis help individuals make informed choices of Action. We all know that local media can find themselves constrained. We all know it. In the past, so they, were, they were constrained by risky domestic domestic context. In those days, when media go to the world and criticize or talk about the election, they are in trouble. In those days, you know, there, there, there's risk. Some few journalists we are, we, are, we are hiding. Most of the CSOs and some journalists went to sleep. We all know. We were all sleeping in those days. International uh, media are often more free to report on the political, politically sensitive or, or, or controversial aspect of election. We all know international media we can report many things in those past days, but not the domestic media. In those days, we say we bury six meters deep. That's why people are afraid of. So thank you very much for your kind attention. Being when it comes to dialogue, when it comes to the sensitization of voters and of course peace building. So I hope the role of the CSU is going to be overemphasized in the electoral process. So thank you so much for that statement. So and finally uh, we can have uh, our, uh, the opening statement 
are delivered by the chairman of the IEC, uh, Ali Momanjar. Once again, good morning to you all, this is members of the commission, members of the media, members of Sango, of civil organizations, members of staff of the IC, ladies and gentlemen. I am pleased to welcome you all to this very important occasion which is yet another key milestone in the social history of the Gambia. The ongoing electoral cycle of 2021 to 2023 is at this final stage of implementation. The, the cycle included the structural conduct of voter registration in 2021, the election in 2021, and national assembly elections in 2022. The Commission is fully gearing up for the successful conduct of yet another landmark election. The 2023 local government elections are slated for 15 April and 28th May 2023. And in 2018, the 2023 local government elections will be held on two separate dates. Elections of councillors will be held on Saturday, 15 April 2023, an election of mayors and chairpersons will be held on Saturday, 28th May 2023. These elections will avail Gambians the opportunity to elect 120 ward councillors, six area council chairpersons, and two mayors and mayoresses. The part of political rights of citizens, voters are to decide as to who will run the councils and how they are to be run. The importance of the councils cannot be understated. Cognizance of the key responsibilities in delivering grassroots development to the Gambia. Ladies and gentlemen, this training is an important aspect of the electoral process. The training is aimed at engaging the media and civil organizations to enable them to effectively take on their roles and roles in the electoral process. Election is often regarded as a complex process requiring the participation of a multiple place. These include election officials, government officials, local authorities, civil officials, and civil organizations, media personnel, and many others. Now, effective participation of the CSOs and media is expected in helping the IEC deliver free, fair, and transparent elections. The IEC continues to make the clarion call that election is the business of all. In view of this, the government wishes to fully collaborate with all stakeholders in the electoral process. The Commission is committed to promoting and conducting free and fair elections based on democratic principles and practices. The media and CSOs are regarded as key partners of the IEC. They have played very positive roles in the success of previous elections, especially in the domain of information dissemination, voter participation, etc. Now, this makes the media a very important vehicle through which voters are given the opportunity to make informed choices. The Commission has taken steps to support the media in delivering its mandate to the public. The IEC media rules 
on election reporting, coupled with the Gambia Press Union Code of Conduct, helps to provide some practical guidelines to journalists in helping them fulfill personal standards, which is generally includes accuracy, impartiality, and responsibility. Journalists are expected to report fairly on all candidates or parties. Whilst upholding professional standards and media ethics. Civil society organizations also play crucial roles in information dissemination and advocacy. Advocacy helps to boost citizens' participation in the electoral process. In a nutshell, this training will equip participants with relevant knowledge and skills to help them participate effectively towards success, also conduct of the country local good elections. The civil society organizations have contributed immensely in the past voter election activities and in election observation. The Commission yet again counts on their full participation in making the IEC, the LG successful. I would like to seize the opportunity to express my profound appreciation to all the media houses and CSOs here present for attending this very important training workshop, which is aimed at delivering excellent practical process to the Gambian electorate. I urge you all to fully participate in the deliberations to make the training a success. A team of trainers from the IEC will take you through the various topics and issues in the general process. I used to tell my colleagues when I'm out of the country, whether they are African, even Africa or elsewhere, that the Gambia is second to known in conducting elections throughout the world. Because Elections mean voting, and to vote, you must have a voter's card. And we inform the whole country where, where we are going to register, where, how, and when, throughout the whole country. And what happens then is that we invite party agents, as well as candidate representatives, to witness every aspect of the process. So that when they see somebody from outer space or a 10 year boy old to come to the register, you say no, he's not a Gambian or he's not of age. And at the end of the session, we paste all those registered in that particular registration shelter there. So that anybody, everybody will know and see those who are registered. So that if you have any complaint against any name in the register, they can appeal to the rising courts because we appoint, uh, uh, appoint magistrates to make sure that any complaint from the list is addressed. And I'm happy to say that the last general registration on which 900, uh, 900, uh, over 900,000 people were registered, there was a single complain about anybody in, the, in that list, not one. So when people are saying that we are saying non gambians what do you call Senegalese? Because the IEC, from myself, right to the last person employed, whether you are a technician, engineer, gardener, whatever, we are only 17 number. And to do this process, we engage over 6,000 people for them to do the registration. And we impo insist on them that the law specifies that anybody comes with a document, ID card, passport, birth certificate, or attestation, that person can be registered. It's then up to the party agents to say no. He's not a Gambian, even though he has to buy uh, uh, an ID card. You cannot do that. 
it's for the politicians to identify who is eligible or not. But the people who engage to do this across the country, we ask them to go by the law. Which law says passport, ID card, birth certificate, or autism. And we give the, 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 the um, during the register, uh, we give the card, voter's card, to the person, they are on the spot, free of charge. Unlike other countries where it's kept uh, for, for, for weeks or months, we give issue free of charge on the spot. So, as far as we are concerned, we believe and we know that we are doing these um, elections free, fair, transparent. And under no circumstances will anybody be, re be, be rejected once you have these documents with you. And now, because of the number of parties we have and what we are expecting, I think we are now going to move from the ballot drum to the ballot paper after the selection cycle. Because can you imagine to combine two elections in one? How many ballot drums can you can, can, can you fit in a pool, polling booth? And these elections, people are only asked to vote. They were said one thousand two hundred dollars to contest, and the ballot drum will cost over two thousand dollars. And how many ballot drums can you? Uh, produce for these people. That's why we are saying this is the last time we are using this ballot paper. Because we are the, the ballot drum. We are the only one in the whole world using this acrylic system. Because then people participate in not marry. But now we are expecting so many of the, the contests. Can you imagine? We have 1,054 polling stations. And where you have five, six candidates for equal soon. And the ballot drum, we, we, we contract uh, GCIs to, to, to produce them. And then you have to paint it to the color of the candidate or the party. And where you have so many independent candidates, we've exposed, exhausted all the um, major, major colors. So you have to combine them. And to paint these ballot drums is a nightmare. So that's why we are migrating now after this election to a ballot paper. I was in Nigeria the last elections, four years ago. There were 78 candidates on one paper to contest the presidential elections, 78 of them. And there is no photo, no name. It's just a symbol. So what we are saying, when we went on Conte Waito here to um, inform people about the ballot paper, there were 11 of them in one page. One of the we have 11. Instead of the ballot paper, we have 11. And the name is there, the party, the color, and the, the foot of the candidate. You just don't put it. No matter how dull one is, you, you, go, you can do, do that. And it's so transparent that the ballot drum box are put uh, on the table. And our system is such that before we start voting, even with the, with the current system, we make sure that party agents are there to ascertain that the ballot drums are empty. It's then sealed and they take the serial number. Then they are put in the polling booth. And after voting, the, these very variants make sure that they are not, the, the flesh were not broken. It's opened there and counted on the spot. And they sign the result sheets. So how can, can, how can anybody complain after that? Because we are saying, during the process, the agents are there to make sure that the one who is voting has the correct card, that's the correct name, and then he's going to be uh, uh, able to go and vote. 
So we are saying, as far as the government is concerned, we are second to none in transparency. Well, let me just end by thanking also the IC staff. who's doing a very, very credible work across the country. And I pray to Allah that Allah continues to guide and bless this country. And on that note, I am pleased to declare this training was open. I thank you very much.
we must do things professionally and we allow the Gambian people to vote. So on that note, on behalf of the um, uh, my commissioner who was supposed to do this discussion, and uh, we just want to thank you and thank every one of you and also pray that you have um, a safe ride back home. So on that note.